What's going on guys, this is Rob, and we are back again with another installment of our Beyond Omega Level series, where we break down the most powerful characters in all of comics. And today, we're going to discuss one of the most powerful villains that have been introduced in Marvel Comics in the last decade, and one that will actually be introduced in the MCU in the next Thor movie, Gore the God Butcher. So Gore was created by Jason Aaron and Esad Ribic, and first appeared in Thor God of Thunder number two in 2013. And Gore would go on to antagonize Thor throughout a story arc that's widely considered to be one of the best stories ever written, which really begs the question, how is it that Jason Aaron became such a great writer? I know exactly how he did it. He used Skillshare, brand deal time. You guys know what time it is. So Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people where you can explore new skills, develop existing interests and get lost in creativity. You know, one of the questions I get all the time is how I grow my YouTube channel. Like how do you grow on YouTube? How do you go from being a person with no subscribers to a ton of subscribers? Well, there is a video on there by MKBHD, who's probably the top tech YouTuber with a ridiculous amount of subs that actually walks you through the entire process, how to craft your videos, how to script them, the whole nine yards, which in a lot of ways has been exceedingly helpful for me, even as an established creator. There's also a whole bunch of videos about marketing and different things along those lines, but that's of particular interest if you guys are looking to grow a YouTube channel and become a full-time YouTube content creator. That's one that I would highly suggest you guys check out. So to get you guys started, the first 1,000 of you guys, of my subscribers who click the link in the description, will get a one month free trial of Skillshare so you can start exploring your creativity today. And after that, it's only around $10 a month. So make sure you guys click the link, make sure you guys go check out MKBHD's video on how to be successful on YouTube, and let's get back into our content. So, Gore was an alien living on a desolate planet, and his life had always been pretty miserable. His mom died defending him from wild animals, he grows up, he gets married and has a family, but then his wife and his kids all die, and all the while, Gore and his people are praying to the gods and even sacrificing members of their tribes to appease the gods, but nothing ever gets better. So, Gore decides that the gods must not be real, which leads to him being exiled from the rest of his people. Now, sometime after this, Gore happens across two gods that have fallen to his planet, apparently after a ruling battle, one of which, of course, is Null the symbiote god. Now, only one of them is still alive, and he asks Gore for help. Gore becomes enraged at the audacity of this god asking for help when he and his family were suffering and the gods did nothing to help. Meanwhile, the sword of Null bonds with Gore, and then Gore uses it to kill the other god. Now, in reality, Gore had only believed the god to be dead, but it would later be revealed that it was actually Null. Now, if you're not familiar with Null, he definitely gets his own Beyond Omega level video sometime, probably in the near future, but basically, he's the god of the symbiotes. So, the race of symbiotes that Venom Carnage and all the rest belong to, Null created them. And this sword that was bonded to Gore is actually the All Black Necro Sword, the very first symbiote that Null had ever created. Now, once he's bonded with All Black and used it to kill a god, Gore develops an insatiable desire to kill as many gods as he can, which leads to him adopting the moniker of the God Butcher. Now, while Gore has no superhuman abilities at all before encountering All Black, he becomes extremely powerful once he bonds with the Necro Sword. For example, as soon as he kills his first god, Gore uses uses All Black to create a suit of armor that allows him to fly off into space and enables him to survive in the vacuum of space. Now, one of the primary abilities that All Black grants Gore is that he can form weapons with the symbiote, including swords that are strong enough to badly injure Thor. He also uses the symbiote to form a variety of constructs, much in the same way that we've seen other Marvel symbiotes change shape into a variety of weapons. So Gore makes his symbiote constructs into a mace or chains or whatever he wants. But one thing that makes Gore's constructs especially devastating is that if they manage to get inside the body of one of their victims, they can eat away at them from the inside and eventually kill him. Now, Gore can also use his mastery over darkness to create constructs called Black Berserkers that are basically creatures made out of darkness that are extremely powerful in their own right. For instance, one Black Berserker was able to fight Thor evenly for hours. So this is one construct representing only a fragment standing up against Thor, who himself is a beyond Omega level character. So this is an extremely impressive feat, but not even the most impressive thing we see the Black Berserkers do. When battling King Thor, a version of Thor from the future that ascended to the throne of Asgard, an army of Gore's Berserkers drowned King Thor in darkness for a period of 900 years. And this is after they've already killed 
everybody else in Asgard. Now, All Black also affords Gore superhuman physical attributes as well. Gore is extremely durable, having survived multiple blows from Mjolnir, as well as a god blast from King Thor that sent him crashing into a planet at the speed of light. Furthermore, he appeared to be at least equal to Thor in terms of strength, and he was able to hurl chunks of a moon at two different versions of Thor from the surface of the planet he created, a feat which needs some explanation, and that explanation will give us even more of an idea how ridiculously powerful Gore is. So the first is that three different versions of Thor came together, one from the past before he was worthy to lift Mjolnir, the most frequently seen version of Thor that lifts Mjolnir, and King Thor from the future, who we discussed earlier. And the reason for this is simple. All three versions of Thor were getting their butts kicked when they tried to battle Gore one-on-one, -on -one because Gore was doing his god butchering over several thousand years. So that's why there's multiple versions of Thor here. But onto the second part of this feat, which is the fact that Gore created an entire planet out of all black, so that's basically just a planet-sized version of the sword he's been manipulating, just on a much larger scale. And it's on this planet that Gore manages to imprison and enslave a countless number of gods to do his bidding, most notably constructing his ultimate creation, a weapon that will bring about the destruction of every deity in the universe, the God Bomb. So the God Bomb is such a formidable weapon that Thor is unable to destroy it with the chunk of a star. But before Gore is able to activate it, he's confronted by all three versions of Thor. Now drawing upon the strength of the gods being killed by his Black Berserkers, Gore is able to not only defeat all three versions of Thor, but nearly kills all three of them, which also just lets us know that we're dealing with a force to be reckoned with in Gore. This is one of the other crazy things about his character too. Gore literally tortured the God of Torture to death. It was nuts. But Gore's plan is eventually thwarted by his son, who you might remember died thousands of years ago, and that's one of the big reasons Gore became who he is in the first place. When he gets his powers, Gore creates a whole new family out of his constructs, but when one of his sons sees him kill the other and then learns he also killed their mother, he realizes that Gore's the bad guy and begins praying to Thor. Now, not only does Gore's son start praying to Thor, but all the gods Gore hasn't killed yet do too. So Thor gets a massive power boost, which allows him to take tank the god bomb explosion and rip all black from gore, rendering him powerless and unable to stop Thor from cutting his head off. It's literally one of the coolest moments, man. Thor's wielding two Mjolnirs and the all black. It's ridiculously cool. But since this is basically a video not only about Gore, but on All Black as well, I think it's worth pointing out that Thor's exposure to All Black was so physically taxing on him that he died. Sure, I mean, he rose three days later, just like Jesus, but All Black was so powerful that Thor couldn't handle being exposed to it, which is kind of weird. Since Gore was able to stay bonded to it for thousands of years, Thor couldn't withstand being bonded to it for a short time. But whoever said anything in comics needed to make sense. Now, eventually, Gore would return when Loki acquired All Black and unwittingly resurrected Gore in the process. Now, of course, Gore goes on to defeat both Loki and Thor, who was at this point the Allfather of Asgard, and then fashions the All Black into the Annihilation Blade, a weapon capable of destroying planets. But even more impressively, even after being killed once again, Gore is able to merge his essence with the universe, effectively becoming his own universe that he dubs the All Black Necroverse. Of course, this doesn't last because Thor defeats him and eventually purges the universe of Gore's influence because that's just how things work. The good guys win in the end. But still, the fact that Gore was able to become a universe universe definitely earns him a spot on the list of characters that are well beyond Omega level. With that being said, guys, we're going to bring this to an end. Thank you all for watching, and I will catch you all later. Peace.